Hey guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books. Okay, so I was gonna do three separate book reviews, but I have like been reading so quickly lately that I was like, screw it, just put them all into one book review. You gave them all five stars, you love them all, and they're all completely different, so just talk about them. So I need to get right into this right away, and I'm gonna talk about them in the order that I read them. So. Um, earlier in the week, I read um, The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. I actually listened to it on Audible. Uh, gave it two stars. Thought it was horrible. I did not like it. Um, I thought it could have been a really great mystery, but I do not feel like it was resolved the way that it needed to be resolved or developed. I thought the characters were unlikable, and the story just didn't... I did <laughs> I don't know, I just didn't enjoy it. So that was my review of The Woman in Cabin in 10. I probably won't be discussing that again. So anyway, but on the heels of that, I listened to, I wanted to listen to something on Audible that I would absolutely love. So I ended up listening to Michael Cardis's Before He Finds Her. This is a mystery um, set currently, and it takes, it's about a girl who, um, you don't really know a lot about her when it starts, but she has something to do with this murder mystery that took place in 1991 about this husband that is a truck driver and he kills his wife and then he kidnaps his uh, three-year-old daughter. So that's really all I kind of want to say about it. I will say this. I think I bought this book on the Audible Daily Deal and um, I didn't really know what to expect. And honestly, on my Audible, I have like eight books I haven't listened to. So I kept on just like going back and forth, like never wanting to pick that. But for some reason that night, when I finished Women of Cabin 10, I was like, this looks really spooky. I really want to read this book. And so I uh, downloaded it and I listened to it that night because I'd already bought it. And uh, I mean, it was phenomenal, you guys. It was the mystery that I was looking for that the woman in Cabin 10 was not. It goes back and forth between present day and 1991. Um, the character develop, it, development is absolutely incredible. You know, a lot of times when you read books by authors that go back and forth between time, and I've mentioned this before in my um, videos, it's lost somewhere in translation. Like, it doesn't seem sincere, or it seems like the author is stuck in one time more than the other. Um, that is not the case with this book. The other thing is that it's told through mul multiple points of view, not in first person. So you get like um, this old man who's kind of followed the case the whole time for 15 years as a blogger um, that used to be a, a newspaper journalist. So he's really interesting to the whole story. And then the woman that's kind of chasing down the mystery and then the background stories of all of the people that were involved with the mystery. And that's really all I want to say because it develops, uh, it develops, it does. It develops so well that there are things along the way that are fair because I may think a mystery needs to be fair. Um, and what I mean by that is that you're allowed to figure it out. Like it shouldn't be just revealed in the last five pages. Um, but there are things that are developed along that are re revealed along the way that are absolutely incredible um, that you're like, yes or no. I don't know. So anyway, it was so good. It was a really short read, you guys. I literally listened to it in two days. It was like eight and a half, nine hours long, maybe 10. I don't know. Um, but it, I was going to pull it up, but I'm listening to something else now. So anyway, that was fantastic. Okay, so I gave that five out of five stars. I would highly recommend that. I'm going to read all of his other stuff. Michael Cardis, he is also on Twitter because I followed him and I tweeted him. He did not tweet me back. But that's okay, Michael. I totally understand. Kisses. I still love you. Okay, so... <laughs> I, that just always surprises me, you guys, because like a couple years ago for my website, uh, my husband and I interviewed Tyler Oakley, and uh, I, I'm sure you guys know and love Tyler Oakley, most of you if you're YouTubers, and literally the second the interview got up, he had it posted like on Twitter, YouTube, he mentioned it, uh, Tumblr, Facebook, everywhere, and to this day, it is like still on a daily basis, one of our highest viewed uh, interviews that we've ever done. And I'm just like, that is such great self-marketing. So when you tweet an author and you're like, I love your book, like every time somebody tweets me about that, my book, whether it's good or bad, it just, it gets publicity and interest. I always retweet it and say thanks or, oh, that means so much to me or whatever. Like, why would you not do that? Like, I don't, I don't understand these authors that are just completely blank. Like Emma Klein, the girls, she doesn't even have a Twitter or a Facebook. Like that just, I don't understand that. Like... Yes, I know that you're an author and you're selling, you're loving to write books, but we're also in the business to sell stories is kind of how I look at it, I guess. I don't know. I probably just lost a lot of points on that one from some people, but I mean, it's the same as fashion designer art, right? You guys are like, Peter, these are supposed to be reviews. What are you talking about? So 
on that little rant, let me get to the next one. But I will say this. Uh, my last author, well, okay, Eileen Cook from With Malice. Oh, my God. She was like, I can't wait to watch all your videos. And she followed me and everything. I was like, it made my day. And I know that they can't follow all of us, but they could tweet us back. They don't get that many. I mean, most authors do not have 50,000 you know, followers and stuff like that, unless they're huge, um, you know, and uh, Julie Murphy, I mean, she totally made my year and tweeted me back. She was like, I said something about wanting to be her best friend. And she was like, oh, I want that too. I was like, oh my God, Julie Murphy that wrote Dumplin'. Do you see it up there? <gasps> that book is incredible. And uh, side effects may vary. Okay. So the next book that I read, I buddy re read with Graham at Mega Man Chief Fan. Although Graham did not mention me in his review video, that's okay. Uh, Graham, I'll be remembering that the next time that we do a buddy reads together. Um, he gave a fantastic review of this book, so I will link it below. We did it together. He read it in one day. Um, his review is, is phenomenal. So, um, And I had so many similar feelings to him. But what's interesting reading a young adult book with somebody that's 16 and I'm 44 is that we differed on one point of view. And this is interesting because uh, Blake the Book Eater, is that his name? Yeah. He and I are going to do A Buddy Reads as well. And I've watched some of his reviews, and he reviewed Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe and did not like it for the same reason, the one reason that Graham had an issue with The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexie. And that was that the language in there did not seem consistent with how a teenager would speak. Okay, let me tell you what's interesting about this. I don't know, and I was thinking about this when I was reading it, because it was the only issue that Graham had with this book. First of all, I gave this book five out of five stars easily. Literally the last two pages, you guys, if you've read this, I sat on my front porch bawling my eyes out, okay? If you've seen Goodwill Hunting, this movie reminded me so much of Goodwill Hunting. Um, it reminded me a lot of Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe as well. Um, I loved how the culture of uh, being a Native American was woven into the story in a humorous yet tragic way. I thought it was beautifully told. I think partly what is being missed on a teenage reader is the, cu the cultural nuances or voices that are coming across. Because when I read Aristotle and Dante by uh, Benjamin Ali or Sayens, and this is similar in all of his books, um, you can hear the, like, the Chicana resonance of it or the... I don't like, okay, I'm, so I'm going over to my husband's family's house today, and like they're a Venezuelan, and they speak English, but it's like they speak in a different resonance. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, and so there's an appreciation about that. And like in both this book and Ari and Dante, there was a softness about how they spoke. So even though teenagers might not speak that way, I think they would. Um, and I don't think that, like, it was interesting because Graham said it wasn't so much how. Um, Junior, the main character, spoke in this book. It was how people spoke back to him. Which, if you think about that from an author's point of view, I thought that was really interesting, um, you know, perspective, because it makes you think, who was the author really interested in telling the story about? And I started reading it. I watched his review halfway through, and so it started affecting how I was reading the book. Um, I had no idea when I picked up this book what it was going to be about. It definitely, it was, you know, it, it's surprising to me because it gets compared a lot to other things. And it's surprising to me that The Perks of Being a Wallflower is the modern-day Catcher in the Rye. This is the modern-day Catcher in the Rye. I mean, this really is, you guys. It reminded, the voice even of Junior reminded me so much of Holden Caulfield. So, anyway, I love this book. Um, so many people have recommended his other books to me. Tonto and, I don't know what the other guy's name is, uh, or Tonto and Lefty or Tonto. Let's see what the book is called. Um, the Lone Ranger and Tonto Fist Fight in Heaven, and I guess it's a movie. So I'm going to go get that. I'm super excited about reading all of his stuff. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, probably one of the top three book, best books I've read all year long. Now, you'd like to know what the best book that I've read all year is? Well, I will tell you if you want to know. Oh, my husband's looking up at me. Hi, Alex. Say hi. Hello. The best book that I have read in 2016, hands down, listen, bought it on Book of the Month Club, Listen to it on Audible and literally listen to it in less than two days. Hands down. Are you ready? And if I mispronounce your name, I'm sorry. Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. Okay. This book knocked my socks off. Okay. I was so worn out by this book. Let me just tell you that when you read the synopsis for this book, it talks about how, okay, so they find this giant hand under the ground and this little girl falls into this hole. And that's really all you know about it. And then she's like, it talks about how she's like 
Rose, okay, the girl's name is Rose Franklin, is now a highly trained physicist leading a top secret team to crack the hands code. So I read this and I thought, oh, it's going to be a book about how they like go back to the site and she's now this physicist. So they're going to go back to the site where she fell into this hole when she was a kid and try to find out what happened. You guys, let me just tell you, this book right here, I mean, it seriously, excuse my language, it wore me the fuck out. I, it, it went in so many different directions. So I just watched this season on Netflix, or this year on Netflix, just like three weeks ago, Stranger Things, and everybody is talking about it. This book is Stranger Things to the literary world. I mean, it is so, it is... Sylvain Nouvelle is the new Michael Crichton. That is all I have to say. I love Michael Crichton, but with literary purpose as well. I mean, he is such... The book is science fiction, mystery, thriller, and literary fiction all wound up together. It is so beautifully told. The whole thing is told through uh, files. Do you see this? Like file numbers. And um, if you're going to... I will say this, um, and I'm sorry... Sylvain for ruining your book sales for you but I read part of this book and I listened to the all of it on audible if you guys are going to read this book and you have audible or you can get it through your library or you can go buy the audible version of it buy the audio version it is a full cast recording it is so incredible to listen it's like listening to a movie and uh, years ago I listened to the mist by Stephen King and it was like one of my all-time favorite uh audiobooks because it was just told so well and it was like this full cast recording this is so much better i mean the main character who you never even know his name through the whole book um is like the smoking man in the x files that was the other thing this book reminded me so much of the x files um uh, and i didn't expect it to go kind of science fictiony and you don't even really know if it does but here's what's so funny so i was literally like two minutes before the end of this audiobook and i was like holy shit this book and i tweeted him and he tweeted me back several times while i was reading it and I was like, um, and we already talked about, can we just talk about for a second, hello, how handsome he is. But then I felt kind of bad because I read his Twitter and it said he's like a proud dad and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, anyway, he is handsome, handsome author, just like me. Okay, so anyway, I um, was like two minutes from finishing this book and I was like, seriously, how are they going to wrap this book up in two minutes? Like I could see I had two minutes left and it gets kind of like the last two minutes are told like, the whole book is very serious, but the last two minutes are kind of, like, jovial. And I was like, what is he doing? Like, this is genius. And he wrapped it up, and there is no way there cannot be a sequel to this book, right? So I get on uh, Twitter, and I'm like, because if you get on Goodreads, it says, um, hold on a second, I'm looking it up. He's, like, the last person I tweeted, you guys. Um... If you get on Twitter, if you get on Goodreads, it says it's like uh, number one of the Themis series. And I was like, well, a lot of audiobooks do that, though. Or a lot of Goodreads books do that, where they say it's like number one, but there's never ever a number two or number three. And then I got on his Twitter. Here's his Twitter, in case you want to go follow him. His name is uh, Sylvain Nouvelle, and it's at Nouvelle, N-E-U-V-E-L. And he tweets back, because uh, he's a good author marketer. Anyway, and he likes his fans, I think. And it said, author of Sleeping Giants, Themis Files, number one, and its sequel, Waking Gods Out, 417. And I was like, oh my God, I gotta have it now. So Sylvain, if you're watching this book, I want the arc. Seriously. I want it sent to my house. I want it this weekend. I want it now. I gotta find out what happens with this story. I'm so, I mean, I fell in love with these characters, you guys. The characters are so well developed that even the ones you hate, you love. <laughs> when does that happen? I mean, he is genius, genius author. The re I cannot believe this book is not number one on the bestseller list, you guys. Hands down, best book I have read all year. So, highly, highly recommend going to get this. Um, it is phenomenal. I saw it at Barnes & Noble. I saw it at Half Price Books. So, you can get it anywhere, probably. Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. So, hope you guys enjoyed those reviews. If you'd like to see what I'm reading or what I'm currently, my thoughts are on things, uh, follow me on Twitter, Goodreads, Facebook, Snapchat, LinkedIn, although I hardly ever use it. And all of my links are below. Also, you can email me. Yeah, so uh, that's all I have for today. Hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. Do you see my beautiful bookshelf behind me here? Uh, Monty. All right, you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.